Hello, and welcome to our Autopipe Quick Start training on model modification. In this class, we will begin with our model from our Quick Start training class, Modeling Piping Geometry. We will insert a disconnected segment. We will use our edit operations. We will insert a pump. We will review the piping model, run a basic static analysis, review the analysis results, and in the end, we will practice how to manage our segments. Let's start with inserting a disconnected segment. A new segment can be inserted into a model using the insert ribbon. Segments can be inserted as disconnected or connected to other segments at a branch or at a junction point. The user must define the name of a segment and the name of the first point on the new segment. If the segment will be disconnected from the existing piping in the model, both the segment and the first point names must be new. By default, Autopipe will assign the name of the first point as the active point in the model when the insert segment command is selected, so this may need to be changed. Next, the user must assign where the first point of the new segment will be in the model by using a reference point and an offset. Lastly, the pipe data identifier of the new segment must be defined. If an existing pipe ID will be used, the user can pick it from the pull-down menu. If the new segment has new pipe properties that have not been defined yet in the current model, a new pipe ID must be defined. Once the new segment is given a new pipe data identifier and the segment dialog box is accepted, the pipe properties dialog box will pop up so that the new pipe ID can be completely defined by the user. The measure distance tool can be used to measure the distance between any point in the model. It's a nice tool to use to check your model, especially the distance between disconnected segments that have been inserted. Using our workbook, let's start with the finished model from our model piping geometry class, and we will begin to insert a disconnected segment. We want to add the disconnected segment to represent a pump discharge line based on the images shown on pages 4 and 5 of the workbook. Point B25 will represent the pump suction nozzle connection, and point C00 will represent the pump discharge nozzle connection point. The figure and table on page 5 of the workbook shows the ANSI pump that we will be using, an ANSI 4x3 A40 pump. This is where all of the dimensions we will use throughout the class have come from. So we will insert the disconnected segment by coming to our insert ribbon and clicking on our segment button. This will be segment C, which is already defined because currently we have A and B defined in our model, so it automatically goes to the next letter. Our first point will be defined at whatever our active point in our model is. So for me, currently that's A25. But this is a disconnected segment, so we want to define a brand new first point, and we will name that C00. We will offset this point C00 from our B25. In other words, we will be offsetting our discharge nozzle from our suction nozzle. And the offset is going to be 0 in the DX direction. 12.5 inches in the dy, so we can actually plug that in in inches. If you notice in the status bar, this is asking for the input in feet, but as long as we actually put the inch symbol, Autopipe will convert the input to feet for us. MIDZ is negative 4 inches, so again I will put in negative 4 with the inch symbol. Our pipe data identifier, the discharge nozzle is going to be a 3 inch standard nozzle. Currently, if we use the pull down, we have 6 inch standard and 4 inch standard available. So we have to define a new pipe data identifier. So I will override this by plugging in 3 STD, continuing with the same naming convention. And I can accept this dialog box by clicking OK. When I click OK, Autopipe will automatically pop up the Pipe Properties dialog box 
because it doesn't recognize that pipe identifier. So it's asking us to define the properties of this new pipe identifier. So all I will do is come to the nominal diameter and change it to three inches. Everything else will be the same and we can click OK. We should now see a point C00 some small distance away from our point B25 and we can zoom in around that area and we can use our measure distance tool to double check that we put the C00 point in the correct place. So we can use that tool by clicking on our tools ribbon and our measure distance button. And down in the command line on the bottom left, it asks us to select a from point and a to point. Our active point was C00, so that is automatically inputted as our from point. Our to point we would like to be B25, so we can either Click on that point if you can easily click on it, or you can type in B25. I'll click on B25. We can double check that the correct points are in the from and to point inputs. And when they are, we can then click Calculate. Autopipe will draw a red arrow from your from point to your to point so that you can double check that you're measuring the correct distance. And it will list the distance in the command line. So we see that our total distance is 1.09 feet. You can use this tool to check distances between any points in your model. And when you're done using the tool, we just want to click Close. Let's continue to model our segment C, our discharge line. We will insert a rigid anchor at point C00 with no thermal anchor movements. So let's select point C00 as our active point. Come to our Insert Ribbon, Anchor, and we will accept this dialog box as default. Next, we will insert a pipe run that travels one foot up. So Insert Run. We have to define the offset or the direction. So we will come down to our DY offset and put in our one foot. Notice we're working with the three inch standard pipe data identifier at this time and we can click OK. The next component is a reducer. We will be using it as an expander here to go from our 3 inch standard pipe to our 4 inch standard pipe. So on the insert ribbon, let's click on our reducer component. We are still traveling up, so the same direction. We will just update our length to 0 0.5 feet. And I want to tab down to my pipe data identifier, which you can see is blank. Autopipe is asking us to input what pipe properties we want to change to. So we can pull this down because we already have the 4-inch standard pipe defined. And we can just select for STD. And we can click OK. The operating pressure and temperature dialog box will pop up here for you to review the hot allowables that are defined and we can just accept this and click OK. Next, we will insert two valves into our piping. It's very common to have check and gate valves in discharge piping. So first, we'll insert a check valve, and next, we'll insert a gate valve. And both of these valves are going to be butt welded. So let's insert our valve. We will be using the Autopipe generic library the ANSI ASME standard. This is going to be a swing check valve. The type is also a swing check valve. This is going to be butt welded with a pressure rating of 150. From that, our length is updated to 0.96 feet. Our weight is updated to 71 pounds. The other thing we want to do is change our joint end type. This is a butt welded valve, so let's change that to butt weld. And we can accept this by clicking OK. Continuing on, we want to put in our second valve, our gate valve. So again, insert our valve component. Same library and standard. Our subcategory is going to be gate valve, butt weld. 150 pressure rating, 
From that, we see our length is one foot and our valve weight is 95 pounds. And our joint end type is now saved as butt weld from the last valve we entered. So we can accept this and click OK. Finishing up this discharge piping segment, we will insert a bend component that starts by traveling in the same direction one foot. So let's insert a bend. We want the length to be one foot, and it is, so we can simply accept this by clicking OK. We see our piping with the transparency applied, so we need to complete this bend. We will complete this bend by inserting a pipe run that travels five feet in the X direction. So on our insert ribbon, let's click on run. We are changing direction, so we need to tab to our DX offset and plug in our five feet. And we can accept this. If I zoom out a bit, we see all of our piping is now the same color. So all of our bends are complete. And this ends our discharge piping. So at this point, we will insert a rigid anchor. Insert, anchor, and I will accept it as default. So if I view my default view, we should all have a matching piping model. At this point, we can come to File and Save. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.